This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It's so great being here helping you with playing the guitar. This is a Technique Tuesday lesson. So on Tuesdays, I've got Technique Tidbits that I throw out. In this Technique Tidbit lesson, I'm going to be going over best practices for the left hand to avoid tension and injury and just sort of maximize what we're able to do with the left hand. So this builds on the last lesson where I was really working with plucking with the right hand. We're going to look at injury individual notes here for the most part and even coordination between the two hands so it's gonna be great let's just go ahead and take a look at the uh, left hand positioning and the best way that we can do this so like all the other technique tidbit lessons that are out there it is important that we reduce tension in the body staying relaxed not building up tension is the most important thing so with the left hand the most important thing to watch for, I've just said important quite a bit here, is that we don't have some strange bend in the wrist. That's where you can immediately, if you if you stretch, now it's nice to stretch, but if you're bending your wrist in one way or the other, it's going to create tension and guaranteed you're going to have some pain very quickly. So we want to avoid that. Most of us, when we put our left hand out, there's a nice natural break, just a slight break in how our body naturally sits between our forearm and our hand, so right in that wrist. And it's okay to maintain, we really should maintain that slight break, but uh, we don't want to overextend either direction. So as we do that, we come around to the guitar neck, then we want to maintain sort of a nice, relaxed, just natural positioning with our wrist. So that's really important. With that, we don't want to be bending our elbow or our arm out to the side in any funny way or raising our shoulder because we'll get tension in those places as well which can cause injury and we'll be feeling some pain after a little while. So our, our shoulders should be relaxed and then we just come around with a nice natural wrist. Now as we're playing individual notes uh, particularly, which is what we're going to work on at the moment, because sometimes when we're playing chords, we finger things just ever so slightly different. But when we're working on good positioning, just playing individual notes at once, it's most ideal that right where our hand comes at the bottom of the neck, it's going to be right across, right across here on our hand, and that it it's about a finger's width away from the bottom of the neck. So we're not touching it because that restricts our finger movement and we're not hanging way down here but we're about a finger's width away and it needs to be the same distance across the hand. So if we go and bend and I'm already bending with my wrist to do this so that would already be a sign that something's wrong but as we go sideways if I stack in my index middle ring and pinky my shortest finger now has to reach the furthest and so that's going to cut down on our ability to finger things really well. There are moments when we do do this, like if I'm playing blues and stuff, and I'm pulling and I'm getting a different type of le leverage, that's momentarily. But as we're working on creating great left hand control and technique, we're going to practice it with the most optimal condition that we can as we get our fingers conditioned for playing in the most relaxed, best way they can for speed, accuracy, and tone. So we want our hand, as our wrist comes around, we want our hand to be spaced uh, across the entire hand, the same distance away from the bottom of the neck. And then our, our thumb goes behind the middle finger so sometimes when we're playing chords and things, it'll it'll be in a slightly different place. But as we're as we're doing the optimal playing one note at a time, it usually is positioned around the back, the center of the back of the neck, behind the second finger. So it just sort of looks like this as we're coming around to the guitar. And the fretboard just sits right in there, the neck and the fretboard sit right in there. So we're gonna use the same exercise that we did in the last lesson, or the last Technique Tuesday lesson here for a minute. We're just going index, middle, ring, and pinky. I'll even do it at the fifth fret where we worked the right hand. So the index finger is represented by the number one, 
Number two represents the middle finger, number three the ring finger, and number four the pinky. So if I step my index finger at the fifth fret, we're in fifth position. Index is going to play notes in the fifth fret, middle the sixth, ring the seventh, and pinky the eighth. Right now we're not so caring about what uh, notes that we're playing, so you can actually do this anywhere along the fretboard. And it's good to practice along the fretboard because as we get higher, the frets are closer together, and as we go lower, the further apart. And so things slightly change as we're moving. So it's great to practice this down low if I was one, two, three, four, uh, down low versus right in the middle of the neck and then up high. It slightly changes the way my left hand is going to approach as we're down and up. So even come at it a little bit at, uh, at an angle just slightly different. So it's good to practice in all the different positions with the exercises that we're going to do. But just to demonstrate here, as I come, as I've come up to the neck in this fashion, my fingers are stretched out further. I've got my my hand about a finger's width away from the bottom of the neck, and as I go lower, my fingers just curl. They curl tighter. Now, sometimes my hand will actually drop a little bit as I play higher too, and that's okay. But for the most part, we're just curling them up and extending. So if we went ahead, and I'm not worried about the right hand, however you're going to pluck is fine. We talked about the right hand in the last lesson. But if you just go ahead and play one, two, three, four, you want the tips, you want to touch the strings with the tips of the fingers. So not laid flat, but the tips of the fingers, and each one on the tip. The best place for your left hand is right behind the metal fret, about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters sometimes. And as you're working this, it's okay to leave the fingers down. Ideally, we want them to stay as close to the strings as possible. So we don't want them high and far off, but we want them nice and close, because as they stay nice and close, they're right where we need them when we need to play. And it just keeps the hand sort of in a relaxed state. Now as I do this, I'm using minimal pressure to push the strings down. We want to try and release, uh, remove any tension. So if I'm really gripping and pushing hard, I'm going to feel tension all the way through. And we don't want to do that. Uh, the more you do this, the more you breathe deep, the more you do these simple exercises, learn to play relaxed in this sort of controlled setting, then when you're playing music, it'll come out more and more. So. You can go index, middle, ring, pinky, try to take deep breaths, relaxed, focus on your finger placement in each of the frets, and staying on the tips of the fingers. Take it nice and slow, slow enough that you can stay completely relaxed and have the control to just continue one, two, three, four. Now, by just doing a simple exercise where it's just sort of a numbers game, one, two, three, four, we don't have to worry about what notes we're playing and we can focus on how we're fingering things with our left hand, making sure that we're not extending our wrist and doing some, some sort of funny movement. The more we do this sort of thing, the more our fingers will develop and the more we gain the ability to play all the different types of music that we're playing with greater ease and control. So you can do the one, two, three, four now as you work on coordination between the two hands and getting this, this uh, hand to work with each of the fingers independently, you can do any combination of these four fingers in a row. So you could go four, three, two, one, and I could go across the strings doing four, three, two, one. I start at the slowest tempo I need to, to relax and have everything working in order, and then I want to build things up to actually being able to play them as fast as I can, staying relaxed as well. So, I could do these pretty fast, 4, 3, 2, 1. So you can just do 4, 3, 2, 1. Any combination, 1, 2, 4, 3 is an example. So you can work different combinations with the fingers. I could do two, one, three, four. The different variations you come up with are going to sort of work the coordination of the left hand and the right hand. So they're really great. There's going to be a certain number that actually exist, and you can figure all those out. I've got it in my th theory and technique book, actually. But these work 
These work really great as warm-up exercises, coordination exercises, and just exercises where we're worrying about staying on the tips of those fingers, keeping the wrist nice and relaxed, keeping the shoulder relaxed, and just getting our body to learn to play the guitar with control in a relaxed state, gain coordination with the fingers. So they're great. Any combination you can come up with is awesome. And these are super, super, super valuable ways to work on left hand techniques. So hope you're having fun with the guitar. Take care. Keep checking in on Tuesdays for these technique tidbits that can help you master the uh, playing of the guitar, reach your highest level, and also Theory Thursdays where I go over fretboard theory, unlocking how we can see the fretboard in all sorts of different ways. And on Saturdays we've got uh, different topics that have a progressive series coming out. Right now there is flat picking. So super fun, lots of great lessons. Take care, have fun playing that guitar, and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my guitar method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.